Ventricular Assist Devices, Helping Your Heart at Home by Beth Hawkins. The Heartware HVAD is a ventricular assist device that can give pediatric cardiac patients with advanced heart failure a chance to live their lives while allowing them the sense of normalcy that is vitally important to every patient. The system is designed to allow patients to be discharged from the hospital, allowing patients to take it with them wherever they go. When I got on the VAD, I, f like felt, I felt the way I did before any of the symptoms. So, I, honestly, I think it's normal. I uh, felt pretty normal, and I got my life back. The HVAD can plug into a standard household outlet and also comes with four rechargeable batteries. When the controller indicates a low battery, the patient can simply plug in a freshly charged battery and continue on. Battery changes are meant to be simple, so patients can change batteries on their own without supervision. A VAD coordinator educates the patient and their caregivers on how to manage the device, respond to any alarms, and care for where the driveline exits the body. If the patient or caregivers notice the driveline exit site is showing signs of infection, they are taught to contact their VAD coordinator. Patients go home on medications, including ones that thin their blood. They will learn all about these medications and be provided with a detailed medication list prior to going home. Patients will also visit a lab periodically for blood work and meet with a VAD team for regular clinic visits to ensure everything is going well. Patients are implanted with this device for a variety of indications, but most commonly it is used as a bridge to heart transplant with the goal of improving the patient's quality of life, not just the quantity. Devin's story. Devin is your typical college student. He lives an active on-campus life and, like any good student, spends a lot of time studying in his dorm room. He has been living with the VAD for almost two years. Uh, they've been really accepting. They made sure, basically, if there's anything I needed, I can come to them. And, uh, for example, if there was a power outage, they told me the particular buildings that had, like, backup generators to go to in case I have to charge my batteries. And, again, I have to, like, make sure my batteries are charged, so I bring extra batteries in my book bag when I go to class. Devin's dorm room contains no IVs or medical devices. Everything he needs to live on his VAD fits under his bed. A quick battery change and he is off to class. The easy stuff that I was able to do in the past, it does take more time. So like showering, I can't just like get a towel and hop in the shower. I have to cover the dressing site, uh, make sure that it doesn't get wet. Danny's story. I was nervous, I was scared. It was just all the emotions at the same time. Danny's lacrosse season was coming to a close, and he had just gotten his driver's license with an entire summer ahead of him. He had been working out all winter and was getting really built up with, with muscles and weights and working out, and all of a sudden he started to lose weight. And with the weight loss, he also started to feel winded when he was going upstairs. And so after a few more weeks of feeling the same symptoms, I... Uh, I went to get a lung x-ray to see if it was walking pneumonia, and it turned out that I had an enlarged heart that they could see in the x-ray. So we ended up getting an echocardiogram, and uh, they told me that I had a very enlarged heart, and I had to go to Boston Children's right away. So that was probably the scariest day of my life, for sure. The days and weeks that followed were a whirlwind for Trish and Danny. Tests were taken, and options were laid out. Initially, they managed a continuous infusion of milrinone because it seemed less invasive. It soon became clear that this option was not for them. So after two weeks, uh, I was having trouble walking more than like 100 yards. Um, I was becoming jaundice, and I just overall was feeling pretty terrible. Um, he, just, he just was not thriving. It was so sad to see him this way. So... Um, eventually on, he, he was, his heart was so bad that eventually on the milrinone, um, his kidneys and liver started to fail. So at that point he had to go back to the hospital and we had no choice but to put him on the VAD. Soon after his surgery, Danny realized being on the VAD was the best option for him. So after like a week of, a week of, uh, 
post-op, I was feeling, I was feeling so much better. I could do stairs. I was in the little back uh, emergency exit stairwell doing like sets of 10 up and down two stories. And uh, I was breaking a sweat and I just felt amazing. I mean, it was the first time I broke a sweat in like three months. Uh, he had so much energy. He just, he had color in his face. He, he just felt so good. So it, for us, it was definitely the right move for Danny, for sure. Danny and his family soon fell into a routine and normalcy began to return. So, you know, in the morning he would get up and he would um, take his meds. Um, then he would click himself out of the electrical outlet and into a battery. And, and his, all his batteries were in a place that were being charged. You would sometimes change my, uh, my site if it had to be changed, which was every two days. And, and then I'd kind of walk around my parents just to get exercise. And then I'd kind of have the day like to myself. I'd hang out with people. Um, I had friends over. And I was actually getting ready to go back to school. Not long after Danny was implanted with the VAD, he got the call that they had a heart for him. His transplant went well, and he is now living a normal life. Have faith in your doctors, and uh, it's going to be all right. And the VAD's not scary. It's amazing, and it'll save your life like it saved mine. And you just got to keep, keep trudging on, and you'll get to that heart transplant. Devin, too, hopes that day will come. But until then, he knows that the VAD will not only keep him alive, but it will also keep his life as normal as possible. All of the goals that I've had, I've been able to achieve even with the VAD. So not really much I'd change. I know I'm going to get a heart. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know what time. I just have to wait and hope. And when I do get the call, I know it will be a great one. So just got to look forward to it. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.